Approximately a decade ago, NASA released this beautiful video that you can find in the description below that essentially was a kind of an inspiration to try to return back to Venus. It was an attempt to encourage scientists and to encourage the NASA administration to form some sort of a mission to possibly get funding and to try to launch a spacecraft in order to investigate our beautiful neighbor and to learn its mysteries. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about Venus once again because something else absolutely incredible was discovered about it relatively recently. So a decade has passed and NASA finally got its wish. We have two NASA missions and one ESA mission going back to Venus in less than 10 years from now. And all three missions are going to be really exciting because we're going to be able to discover a lot of new things about this beautiful planet. But what makes Venus exciting? Well. There's only one image you need to see to try to understand all of this. Or in this case, it's the simulation from Universe Sandbox. We have Earth, Venus and Mars. Notice how Earth and Venus are pretty much exactly the same in terms of size, mass and even density. They're literally sister planets. Mars, on the other hand, is a lot smaller, it's also a lot less dense and overall is really not as exciting of a planet compared to, of course, Venus. Venus seems to be that one object that can actually help us answer a lot of questions about our own planet and possibly even help us understand how life formed on Earth and if it one day existed on Venus as well. Venus is a lot more exciting in every respect. And so all three missions are going to be hopefully answering all of these questions. While at the same time going to Venus will definitely propel us to a completely new generation of technology as well. I've actually discussed this in one of the previous videos that you can check out on the channel, it's going to be popping up somewhere right there. But to try to understand the importance of Venus and the missions to Venus, let's talk about our own planet. So when it comes to planet Earth compared to some of the other planets, there are a lot of features that our planet has that no other planet or moon has in the solar system. One of these major features is what we refer to as plate tectonics. The idea represented in this simulation right here that sort of shows you that the planet is technically divided into these plates. And these plates, they move around, they interact, they also create all sorts of geological features. And today we also believe that they're responsible for recycling a lot of the material from inside the planet to the outside and vice versa. And though on the one hand they're also responsible for a lot of earthquakes and a lot of volcanoes, on the other hand, plate tectonics and the interaction of plates is believed to be absolutely crucial for the survival of life on our planet and for the relative constancy of the climate on our planet in the last billion years or so. And going further, it's even believed that one of the reasons why Venus became so extremely hot and so extremely thick in terms of the atmosphere is really mostly because of the lack of plate tectonics, the lack of this geological activity that would otherwise protect this planet and would otherwise maintain somewhat habitable conditions on the surface. And so plate tectonics in this case is sort of the key feature. But the question is, is Venus indeed inactive in terms of plate tectonics or is it something that we just don't really understand well? Well, one important feature that was discovered not so long ago, something that's also visible right here, is the potential presence of still active volcanoes or volcanoes that were recently active. Suggesting, of course, that something geological is still going on on the surface. A lot of previous studies have also discovered that Venus was definitely volcanically active in the last few hundred million years or so, and several major volcanic features have already been discovered there as well. But interestingly enough, some of these volcanic features appear to be relatively recent. But how recent is, of course, a question we cannot really answer until we go in there and investigate it in more detail. But the scientists behind this recent paper discovered something else that nobody has ever seen before. They've discovered these unusual features you see right here, a lot of which were located in the lowlands of Venusian surface that indicated some sort of large-scale movement that produced a lot of deformation and signs of shear stress, kind of similar to what you would expect from really large chunks of ice or really large ice cubes as they slowly move around grinding and rubbing against each other which implies that there's definitely motion and possibly some sort of a geological activity on the surface of Venus after all. Very likely driven by very similar effects like on planet Earth, from the activity of mantle and the heat exchange that produces a lot of churning on the inside, which then releases the energy and provides the motion for the plates on top. And one way they try to prove this is by actually modeling some of their observations and creating models here on planet Earth 
And by using mathematical flow models, they were able to match the observations to some sort of a motion of large chunky plates similar to thick ice cubes floating on the surface of water, which were most likely driven by internal convection and creating a lot of this deformation that was then visible on the surface of Venus. Or in other words, unlike planet Earth where the plates are just these large chunks that are relatively thin in size, it looks like Venus might possess these smaller cube-like objects. Or not necessarily cube-like, but just chunky objects that are floating on top of Venusian mantle and are still interacting with one another, producing all sorts of sheer stress that's visible on the surface afterwards. And what's more is that a lot of these features definitely appeared after the last volcanic activity. Which of course implies that a lot of this is more or less recent. If the volcanoes are recent, then a lot of these shears that have formed, for the most part, are also more or less recent features as well. Although when I say recent, I mean in the last few million years or so. And if this discovery is correct, and if what the scientists discovered is indeed what's happening on the surface of Venus, this actually makes Venus even more exciting. Mostly because it seems to be this unique tectonic object. It's not as inactive as, say, the Moon or Mars, where there's really nothing happening, but it's also not as active as Earth. It's something in between that has its own thing going. But more importantly, it might also show us what happened to Earth a few billion years ago. So first of all, generally speaking, the thickness of the plates, the so-called lithosphere, depends on its temperature. And the temperature usually is affected by what happens inside the planet. But since in the past Earth used to be much hotter than today, we believe that the heat flow from within the planet to the outside was about three times higher than it is today. Which also means that the lithosphere of ancient Earth might have sort of been somewhat similar to the lithosphere of modern Venus. Or not thick enough to form actual plates like what we have on Earth today, but thick enough to form these large fragments to bounce around, to rub against each other, and to form various structures that we observe on modern Venus as well. And so ancient Earth might have been like modern Venus, which is actually something really exciting if it's true. It means that maybe one day Venus will evolve into something similar to planet Earth and possibly even become habitable once again. At least that's one of the potential explanation. It could also be the other way around. Maybe Venus actually lost its plate tectonics and has now started to get these unusual fragmented formations on the surface. So there's definitely a lot of things to discover here in order to understand what happened to Venus, just so that we can understand where our own planet is headed as well. A lot of really interesting questions can be answered by directly and thoroughly studying the surface of Venus and trying to understand what happened to Venus in the past. But until these future missions in the next 10 years or so, and until we physically launch more spacecraft and possibly even manned mission to this unusual planet, we're not really going to know much else. And speaking of manned missions, a few years ago NASA had this really really cool proposition, the video for which you can find in the description below, on how we could potentially launch manned missions here with a return craft that would be really really awesome. And in this case, the craft itself would be a kind of a zeppelin that would move around Venus launching all sorts of different probes, with pilots basically just living on the balloon itself. But once the mission was finished, they would launch a return craft, which would then return them back to planet Earth and return all of the samples and all of the discoveries there as well. Now, unfortunately, after about seven years, nothing really came out of this, but this would be a really awesome mission if it actually did happen one day. You can check out this video in the description below as well. But I guess until future studies, until future discoveries, and until these missions actually happen, we're going to be slowly learning about Venus by just studying some of the old data. Once we discover something incredible, I'll make sure to follow this up in one of the future videos. I've been really looking forward to a lot of these Venusian missions, and I'm super excited we're kind of going back after all. On that note, check out the links and all of the videos in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.